Hi guys, welcome to my channel. So today we're doing a video that I think pretty much any aerial beginner, whether you've taken a few classes or you're thinking about starting aerial, or even if you're a little bit more advanced, is going to find very useful. These are five basic mistakes that I see almost every single beginner student I've ever had make. And I'm gonna show you how to avoid them. They're going to make a big difference in your aerial practice and especially in these specific moves. But first, I'm just gonna remind you guys to please do subscribe to my channel because it is extremely helpful with the way that YouTube works and the algorithm, etc. I will be very, very grateful and it'll keep you up to date on all of my other tutorials. Okay, let's move on. We're gonna start by talking about your gazelle. This is a mistake I have seen so, so many people do, so don't fall into the trap. The mistake is that I am not turning my body very far to the side when I turn to go into my gazelle. That means when I start to lean back and lift my leg, my body is really far away from the hoop. I've got a lot of space between my ribs and the side of the hoop. Therefore, when I continue to lean back, the hoop is gonna hit lower down my butt and lower down my thigh. I'm not gonna have that nice hip crease pocket to put the hoop in, and I'm gonna end up sliding down in the hoop and not being able to do a full split. You can even slide out of the hoop because you're not locked in if this is happening. So it's well as being less pretty, it's also a little bit dangerous. Here is how to fix this mistake. So the first thing I'm gonna do is turn my body as far as possible to the side. That's going to help a huge amount. Really turn as far as you can to the side and then turn some more. You cannot be too far to the side going into your gazelle. Then I'm going to put the hoop nicely in my armpit as I lean back. So keeping my body very, very, very close to the hoop. That means I can have the nice hip pocket in my hip crease when I lift my leg up. All I have to do is pull my front leg down and I'm in a beautiful full split. Even if you don't have the flexibility for a full split, it's gonna leave you a lot more locked in and comfortable in this move. If you turn to the side at the beginning, keep that body close to the hoop. Just look at the difference here. Everything looks much easier, I'm much more secure, and it's just a lot more graceful. So turning your body to the side and staying close to the hoop is a essential part of the transition into your gazelle. Okay, next up, we're gonna talk about your straddle, like a straddle mount, or if you're below the hoop doing a move you need to straddle into. Number one mistake I see beginner students make is to drop their hips down far away from the hoop. Sometimes that's because you're lacking some strength, sometimes that's because you just feel like your hips are far enough up, but they are not. Two things that happen because of these hips dropping down is first off, it's a lot harder to hold the move, and second off, it makes your legs close your straddle, come into more of a V shape in front of you for balance. The way to fix it is very simple. Just arch your chest forward. Think about pushing your chest forward between your arms. Lift your hips up, try to touch them to your wrist and open those legs up a little bit. You don't have to be in a full split, but you do have to have more than that narrow V that we had before. A good exercise for this is to lower your hips and lift your hips. Lower down and lift up. That's training your body to come into that beautiful lifted hip shape. It's also gonna help you build strength in your core and abdominal muscles. This is another aerial hoop basic that you use 50 times in any aerial hoop choreography. So having a good proper straddle position is going to be really, really, really useful to you. You also wanna make sure that you've got nice straight legs once you open them up. Your feet are nice and pointed or flexed if that's an intentional choice you're making and your head is in line with your body. Okay, next up we're gonna talk about the mermaid. This is slightly subtle but it's gonna make a big difference in the finished position. So you're gonna start your mermaid by putting your hand on the top of the hoop and the mistake is to go directly from when you place your hand to the part where you rotate out of the hoop. You can see that I don't have a lot of space to rotate here. I'm ending up with my hips facing the side and it's just not quite the right position. You should have your hips facing the ground. Mine are really directly to the side here and it's, it's not cute, you guys. This is not what we're looking for. The way to fix it is once you've placed your hand, you're going to drop your hips down out the back of the hoop before you rotate. 
Once your hips are lowered down and the hoop is closer down towards your knee but still on your thigh, you're going to be able to rotate that full 180 degrees into the correct and beautiful position. This is not only aesthetically more pleasing, but it's also going to be important when you use your mermaid to transition into other moves. For example, a mermaid split, which you could then take into a beauty roll. You're going to have to have those hips down facing the ground to get that. If the hips are facing the side like they are here and you take your top leg out to go for your mermaid split, it's really awkward looking. What you want instead is to drop those hips down like we said, rotate from there and then you can remove your front leg and come into a beautiful full split because your hips are facing the ground. This isn't a specific move but I want to talk about arms in general because they make an enormous difference to how any routine choreography or even single move look in the air. Here I am committing a few cardinal sins of arms. First off, I am breaking my wrist, in other words, holding my hands at an angle that is almost 90 degrees to my arm instead of letting my hand continue the long line of my arm. I'm also doing blade hands, in other words, pressing all my fingers and my thumb together to have my hand be one flat unit. And I've got stiff elbows, so I'm not really using my elbows to bend and move gracefully. I'm just kind of waving my stiff stray arms through the air. Here's how we avoid all that. The first way is to keep your hands relaxed with fingers slightly separated. You don't want awkward, overly stressed fingers. So a good way to do that is to shake out your hands, let them relax, and just kind of see where they fall. And that is what you're looking for in the air. You can see my hands are really elongating my arm right here and not distracting from it. You don't want to break your wrist like this. That is not cute. It shortens the length of your arm. And you don't want those blade hands. They are also very, very awkward. They're kind of like a duck. So leave those behind and have a nice relaxed hand with separated fingers and a wrist that is continuing the line of your arm. Here you can see the difference. I'm letting my elbows bend naturally. I'm keeping my hands nice and relaxed. I'm keeping lots of like breath and air in my movement and just having a sort of a relaxed feel to my arms instead of that stiffness and stress you saw earlier. And another concept that's super important is feet. Just generally in all of your work, you wanna have nice feet that elongate your legs. You're gonna do that by pointing both your ankle and your foot like this. It makes my leg look nice and long. Or intentionally flexing your foot. If you're doing something more contemporary, you wanna use that flexed foot. These are both good. What you wanna avoid is crunching your toes. In other words, pointing your toes, but not your ankle. This is not good, it looks stressed, it looks awkward, and it's just not ideal. You can see here in my back balance that when I have the crunched trapeze foot, like we call it, that my legs look shorter, everything looks more awkward and stressed. But when I point through my foot using my ankles, then immediately my legs look longer, I look more at ease and in control, and everything just looks more graceful and professional. So one more time, I'm going to show you the mistake and the finished product of each of these moves because just these little corrections will make a huge difference in your aerial work. I know when we're doing aerial training in classes, it's easy to get caught up in, can I do a move? Can I physically get in the shape and hold it? Which is important, but what's much more important is can you do a move and do it so that it looks beautiful. These little details are the difference between physically getting into a shape but looking awkward versus getting into a shape and looking beautiful, poised, and professional. If you liked this video and uh, want to see more like it, I have some more videos like this on my channel. I've got one about looking like a dancer in the air, which is sort of similar ideas with the little details. I've also got other ones about like how to cheat a little bit if you don't have the best split or the most bendy back. Those are both linked in the description of this video. And again, if you liked this video, then please also make sure to subscribe because that helps me out enormously. I'm extremely grateful for every time you guys subscribe. It also helps you keep track of the basically every week video that I do. Um, I have all sorts of things like conceptual videos like this to tutorials for specific moves and I come out with new ones all the time. So please take a minute to do those two things and I'll be very, very, very grateful. 
And with that, I think I will see you guys next time.